Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be having a brief conversation with Dr. Jeffrey Gelbner. He's joining us here as board member at First Choice Neurology. He's also an expert consultant to the state of Florida. He's coming this morning to talk about the future of virtual and digital mental health tools and his experience using eClinical Works. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Gelbum. Thank you for taking the time. Good morning, Neil. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Well, give us a little insight uh, into your professional background and uh, your practice briefly. Okay, very briefly. Uh, I'm a board-certified neurologist uh, based here in South Florida uh, in private practice in a very large uh, neurology group, First Choice Neurology. Uh, we have right now uh, about 80 offices uh, throughout uh, South Florida, uh, over 120 uh, neurology practitioners. So we touch an, a lot of uh, neurological uh, care and treatment uh, in the state of Florida. Uh, we work very uh, uh, in, intently with uh, psychiatry, uh, neuropsychology, so uh, psychological and psychiatric uh, disorders associated with neurological conditions uh, is really a big big part of what I do every day. What are a couple of the, the major challenges, in your opinion, when using virtual and digital mental health tools? Well, that's a great question, Neil. I can tell you that body language, uh, what you often see but don't hear in the three-dimensional space gives me as a practitioner a lot of clues as to how someone is doing. For example, fidgetiness. Uh, slowness of movement, uh, tremors, uh, poor mobility. These are physical attributes not often clearly captured on a two-dimensional screen uh, from the chest up, which is typically how telehealth proceeds. So although our audio quality is great, although our visual quality is great, a lot of times it's easy to miss some of the subtle physical manifestations of a neurologic or a psychiatric condition on the two-dimensional screen. So that is some of the shortcomings of a telehealth encounter. <laughs> on the other hand, wait, let me just finish for a moment. On the other hand, it's extremely valuable because the ability to, to assess someone in their natural home, work, or, uh, or private space is a wonderful way of really seeing how someone is, is, is doing day in and day out. So there are certain benefits to telehealth, and of course there are certain uh, evaluative uh, pitfalls, or I should say detriments to telehealth. But overall, the telehealth experience I think is very valuable and extremely useful. I, I give it more pluses than minuses. Well, how are you specifically using eClinical Works at your practice to uh, address some of those issues? Well, basically, our practice is a seamless uh, day of both live and virtual encounters. So uh, it would be impossible to have two separate schedules on two separate itineraries on two separate platforms to run a, a, a good clinical day. So our patients are scheduled throughout the day on ECW, 9 to 5, like any other doctor's office. And right on the ECW line on the calendar, it says either uh, office visit or telehealth. So I seamlessly transmit transition throughout the day between seeing patients in exam room one and evaluating patients on screen one. So ECW's platform allows this seamless day in, day out opportunity to either look at someone live or look at someone virtually. I'm not working with multiple screens. I, I can do this either from my office or uh, if I'm traveling then it becomes a, a complete telehealth day and I can encounter patients on my smartphone or, or laptop. My practice continues regardless of whether I'm in the office or not. It, it's a wonderful opportunity for me not to miss work and, and to maintain great continuity of care uh, if I decide to take a day off or, or a week off, I, I'm, I still have access to clinical care. So what type of feedback have you received from your practitioners using eClinical Works? And is this efficiency something that can be recognized by your patients? First of all, let's talk about the patients because the patients are the most important component of any medical practice. 
So in terms of being patient focused, I don't see how we can ever go back to the old days, meaning the days before telehealth became the norm. And that's obviously transpired as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Patients don't want to go back. Uh, for younger patients, they often now can visit me or whatever doctor from the comfort of their home or from work. So back in the day, if you were a working patient, and let's say you had a three o'clock appointment with Dr. Gelblum, you'd have to leave work at one o'clock, uh, drive to Dr. Gelblum's office, sit through Miami traffic, in my case, where my office is based in, in busy Miami, uh, try and find a parking space, sit in the waiting room, see the doctor, uh, then, then figure out how to drive home or, you know, you've just lost a, a half day of work. Uh, but now, if you've got a 3 o'clock telehealth meal, for example, if you had a 8.30 telehealth with me right now, right after this uh, interview is concluded, uh, you're logging on and, and we're having our encounter. Absolutely. Yeah. This could not happen absent telehealth. So from a patient perspective, it, it's the most convenient and accessible way to get mental health, medical health, any kind of health. Uh, and it's not disruptive to your work day, your uh, activity day, your, your caregiving day, your child care day, none of that. Uh, so from a patient perspective, it, it's extremely valuable. From a doctor's perspective, your day runs better on time, meaning so many times patients would call, I'm running late, I'm stuck in traffic, I can't find parking, what floor are you on? Is your office on the 10th floor or the 12th floor? I'm stuck in the elevator, I'm down in the lobby all sorts of issues. Mm -hmm. But now that doesn't happen because if you've got a nine o'clock appointment with Dr. Gelblum, you're online at nine o'clock and our, our visit starts at nine o'clock. So there's no delay. So I'm happy about that as a physician because my patients are now all running on time. And then the just the flow is much better. So for example, patient registration, uh, patient filling out documents, even uh, mundane issues, is patient co-pays, this is all handled electronically, automatically by the ECW platform the day before. So all I do is turn on my computer or walk into my office every morning at, at 8.30. Uh, and my day, I flip the switch and my day starts at 9 o'clock unencumbered, seamless. Uh, I, I'm not getting any uh, pushback from my secretary saying, oh my gosh, patients forgot their wallet, their $20 copay is missing. All of these things are, are, are now a moot point because... Uh, the, the ECW platform and the electronics and the technology really streamlines everything so much easier for everybody, for my staff, for my, for my practitioners, for my patients. Everybody's happier. You mentioned that uh, your patients don't want to go back to the way that it was. We, won't, we don't want to go back to what was the dorm. Are there any other trends that you see uh, down the line for virtual mental health services? Well, what's, what's so nice about virtual mental health is you can actually, I think, track your patient's compliance much better because it's easier for patients to come to the office, uh, or I should say to come for an encounter. Uh, and telehealth allows better tracking of compliance because we're working on one platform called ECW. Uh, and, and again, it's not ECW specific, it would be any, any uh, any well-integrated, sophisticated electronic uh, health system. So ECW, of course, is my favorite. That's why we use it. But there are other uh, systems out there. So any, com any well-developed, integrated electronic health platform will allow me, with one screen, to not only assess the patient on the right-hand side of the screen, but to assess pharmacy uh, pickups on the left side, uh, physical therapy encounters on the left side. So in, in one screen, I can see how patients' compliance has been. Uh, we can uh, evaluate them face-to-face -face, uh, live. So all of this is, is, a, is a comprehensive trend that can only be facilitated uh, within a, a complex network such as, such as ECW. So in that regard, I, I think it's been a, a very, very valuable tool and, and, and nobody wants to go back because going back means worse health, mm. worse health for the patient. We're, we're in a better state now, better accessibility, better compliance, it's just better. Well, if you would give us a website where we can learn more. Well, uh, fcneurology.net 
firstchoiceneurology.net, but the website is fcneurology.net. That's, that's our uh, group practice website. There, one can learn all about the benefits of telehealth, as well as uh, how uh, neurology functions in the virtual space. Uh, and this is a tool that people access all over the nation because there's a lot of information about various neurological diseases there. But we've got another platform called neurotogo.com. So aside from uh, First Choice Neurology website, the neurotogo.com, N-E-U-R-O, number two, go.com, is a great place uh, for non-patients or caregivers or anyone uh, wishing to have a, a chat with a board-certified neurologist uh, about a neurological condition that is affecting them or a loved one. So it's not an actual uh, office visit per se where evaluation and, and clinical management occurs, but it's basically a way for someone to access uh, the resources of a board certified neurologist to talk more about a condition, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, schizophrenia, uh, dementia, stroke, uh, MS, any condition uh, of importance, headaches, uh, and any serious condition where, where they feel like they need some guidance uh, and, and insight from a board certified neurologist. So, so those two websites, fcneurology.net and neurotogo.com are great resources for the community uh, at large uh, to learn more about uh, 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 neurological care and treatment uh, in the virtual space. And, and of course, this is all taking forward, uh, taking place within the ECW framework. So ECW uh, is the method by which this all transpires without ECW. That's the engine that, that moves the train. Well, I sure appreciate you joining us here on the program this morning, Dr. Gilbert. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Jeffrey Gelbum. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio. 